Alright, welcome to Stampscaping 101. We're going to try our fence and uh, aspen trees on vellum. Okay, we're going to try to go for additional depth in this scene. This is just my last scene doing it on glossy cardstock, and I think we've achieved a lot of depth on this, but with the use of vellum and that translucent type of property of it, I thought maybe we can try some different things on it. Um, I don't know, there's a lot of things that I need to explore with this type of surface here. It's just such a... It's like a surface of mystery uh, to me. Okay, I'm laying down some brilliant yellow. That's the number 43 Marvy. I have it in both pen and matchable formats here. But I'm going to lay down some of that. Maybe we'll incorporate a little bit more green into this one too. And I'm just kind of scribbling around a little bit of orange on here. I'm not doing it everywhere. I mean, you could put it a lot in a lot of different areas if you want to, but we'll just do it in a few select areas. And then what I do is I go in and I blend those um, darker colors into the, the piece. And periodically, I'll just kind of take my pen and I'll wipe it off like that. This is the 1500 series of Marvy uh, markers. These are the pens that everyone used to use, okay, um, in the early days of stamp. I'm talking about the uh, 80s and 90s, uh, at least in the mid-90s. And then ink pads started coming out and were available. And then everyone pretty much switched to um, ink pads at some point in time. But the ability to um, do multicolored images on... Um, Kind of your more solid styles of uh, imagery um, is lost with the pad, okay? You can't get multi-colored tones in it. Not really. I use them both in conjunction with one another. But I'd highly recommend picking up some of these pens at some point in time. Uh, if you have images that are just, you know, not all outline styles of designs, okay? Because... You can get very dynamic, and you can go for that kind of watercolored look with your pieces. Okay, now, here's my idea. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I'll kind of make my assessment when I stamp this out, and I'll see if it reads on the back side of the, uh, as, you know, an impression on the back side of this. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use my paint pens on the front side. Okay. And... The paint pens hopefully will look like they're much more um, kind of forward on the um, stamp impression than just doing it all on the same plane, you know. While the paper is very thin, it is still going to be pushed back a ways by being, you know, the very nature of it being on the back. Okay. Large images with a lot of solid area. Be sure you press adequately in the center of the image. Sometimes I don't do that. Uh, I missed a little bit right there. You had it in there like that. <laughs> okay, so there that image is. Now that's on the front. This is what it will look like on the back, okay? I don't know. That looks pretty good on the front, though, too. You know what I might do? I might go with an impression on the back. Maybe the smaller version of it. And I can do these larger ones on the front like that. Hmm. Uh, well, I don't know. I, you know, you can do one on the front and you can do one on the back too. And they can, they could be the same size um, trees. They're just, you know, one's kind of smaller than the other. But, uh, hmm. again. Now see, you want to go top, bottom. Don't rock it though, like, you know, like lifting it up or anything like that, but just kind of move where your impression pressure is, okay? You don't really need to do it too much on the bottom, but really, you know, press in the center there too. And like I said, if you don't get it all the way, just go in there and pop one right in there. Now see, this one's different. 
But doesn't that look good, you know, in terms of the, the variation you can achieve? Okay, now, let me go get my um, smaller aspen. I think it'll look good here in the background. Okay, we have our smaller one. You can see it's about a 70% uh, um, version of the larger one. I'm looking at this, the inks are still kind of damp on this one, especially this one right here. You know, when you're using these types of markers, you're really applying a lot of uh, ink onto them and uh, building that up. But as we flip this around, we can see what that looks like. It looks very muted, doesn't it? So that's what that looks like right there. So let's see, we'll, we'll approach this in the same way. I'm kind of curious to know how it's going to look as I stamp it in the back of one of these uh, trees here. Okay, so I'll approach this in a similar manner. I'm kind of, I'm not sure of uh, what colors I'll do on this one, just from the very fact that it'll be on the back, but it's supposed to look kind of more distant too, so I was thinking maybe I should do it a little bit darker, but uh, I don't know. Okay, let's see. I think I'm going to bring a little bit more green in this one just for that variation in hue and compared to the other ones too. But see, I'm going to be stamping this behind this one, so I think that maybe I won't stamp too much of the, uh, the green in this one, so I'll, you know, just take some of that out. But where the green's over here, I can, you know, show more of it. If I, if I have it over here, it'll show right through this one. But... Again, I'm not going to worry about that too much, or at all, because I'm going to be using these paint pens over these, and these paint pens are pretty, they're, they're reasonably opaque. I mean, they're still translucent, they're, you know, I haven't found any media besides the bleed proof why that's really opaque, but, okay, so that is that, so that is going... Oops. <laughs> I was thinking that this kind of edge right here is going over here, but I was looking at it this way, though. I, I, I still get very confused, you know? These stamps go backwards and everything like that, too, of course. And then, um, not only that, let's do something here, too. Um, I'm sorry, I'm kind of working all out of order. If I was... To teach this, I'll know exactly. Okay, do this, this, and this. Okay, now I'm getting a little bit of fingerprint marks right up here. Okay, but like I did in my previous video, what I did was this. I took um, some of the Distress Ink Antique Linen. It's just a very light tan color. A lot of you probably have that pad, Antique Linen. A lot of you might not have the reinker, but... I'll show you the reinkers do, okay? Now, I'm going to be doing this. This is the back side, okay? This is the front side impressions. So I can just go right over this and not worry about blurring out these um, images, okay? But I like that look that um, that kind of foundation color provided when I did it on glossy cardstock, okay? So it's just giving kind of a warm, I don't know, whatever, tinge to this um, surface here, okay? I don't know if you can tell. Um, yeah, you probably can't, but see, I mean, it's just a very light tint on there, okay? Now, let's do the same thing with uh, the walnut stain. I don't know if this walnut stain is going to be dark enough, Um on the back side of this paper or not. You know, it's kind of interesting though, because now that I've gone over it like this, it's made the, the paper a little bit more transparent. So the intensity of the trees, don't they look a lot um, kind of more saturated? I don't know if it's while this is wet though, or if it's done that kind of permanently, I don't know. I could heat set it and find out. Okay, this is the walnut stain. I'm just putting some of that walnut stain down here as a base, okay? So it's like you're just transitioning this up, okay? So you start down here and you know, put a few strokes on there so it's getting a good saturation 
of this walnut stain. And then as you move up like this, um, the, uh, the ink on here gets a little bit drier. Can you see this transition right here? It's really hard to see it like that, but see this right here? So it's darker and then lighter. Okay, this paper is really beautiful to do that on too. It's super easy to uh, do. Okay, now is this still wet enough? I think it is. Okay, now this is the front. This is the back. Okay, so I'm going to put this, I have that little green tinge over here. I don't know if I, maybe I should wipe this off a touch right here. Yeah, I won't do it too much, but I'll see, I'll hope that this tree is still a little bit wet for my inking. I think it should be. Okay. That's pretty dark right there. But that's, yeah, you know, it's because I'm looking at it from there. So here it is right here. Yeah, that's not too bad. It's so weird. It feels like I'm handling tissue or something like that. And I think that that overall stain that I laid down there, going over it with this uh, heat, I think it did um, kind of uh, lighten it somewhat. Okay. But let's go in here. Okay. All right. Okay. And I tell you what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off the bottom. I'm going to transition this a little bit more. So, okay, I'll damp, I'll wipe some of this off as well. And we'll go a little bit higher like this. The higher the trunks are, it represents um, kind of the more distant something is. It's not how high something is up here because, you know, the trunks start down here. All right. So it's, it's kind of like whatever they're starting on distance wise in terms of the trunk so okay so there's um some background trees they might look good up there too huh let's do this okay really kind of wiping it off and i'm really kind of wiping it dry down here so it's really only this top part and let's hit that up here in this area Okay. Second impression. Ooh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. So filling in like that. All right. The brown walnut stain is on the back. Now let's put it on the front to get a deeper version of that tone. Okay. Uh, here's what I learned. Uh, doing it the first time. It's just easier to do it right now than to stamp the fence in black, you know, which is really dark, and to try to get this tone done over the black. You know, I had to kind of heat set it, but um, last time, but just do it right now, you know, and, and it'll save ourselves a lot of time. Okay. And this is really, you know, vellum is really, really nice in terms of, uh, doing this type of uh, ink kind of blending. I mean, it just blends in so easy and smoothly. Easier than most? Eh, probably. I, it, it's just, it's less porous, you know, than, you know, like papers. So it just kind of, you know, to get those kind of real easy um, transitions and smooth you know, little um, applications like that. There's just no problem at all. The other, the other video was kind of more of a, a test. I just added yellow down here, but that's okay. I was thinking about adding this darker brown. Okay. Well, maybe that yellow is good down there, too. Really kind of warm things up. See, I'm kind of adding that little streak across like that. And that kind of anchors the, uh, the trees down in 
I don't know, um, value and uh, I don't know, kind of a visual opacity when you create shadows underneath things. Okay. It just gives them, I don't know, kind of, I don't know, weight and uh, presence, I guess you can say. They're not just floating in space, you know, not um, creating any type of uh, difference in the location that they're at. So, you know, if you put something somewhere, like my hand right here on the table, it creates a shadow, right? So if you just kind of have something down there, it's not creating a shadow, it's like, you know, it's like a ghost or something like that. But see how that kind of, just that little streak in there. So th these are transitions like that. Okay, coming in from the outside edge in. On a paper like this, you just have to make sure that you don't, as you're wiping in, you're not going, you know, like, eh, you know. So just kind of hold it down, you know. And it just comes to show you, don't press so hard on it. Just get it in repetition very lightly, okay? But see that kind of atmosphere in there? I really like that. That It's kind of interesting with the vellum like that. Okay, I think I'm going to use the Brilliance pads. You can do this in, I mean, dye-based inks will work on this, okay? But this is a little bit wet right now. So if I went with a wet dye-based ink on top of this, um, it might run a little bit. You know, I mean, you can heat set this. I don't feel like heat setting it right now. So... Um, I'm looking at this fence right here. Um, yeah, I don't feel like heat setting it. So, the thing that was interesting with me that I found, I, I looked on the Tsukaneko website, and I'm pretty sure that the, the Brilliant things, they said it's a water-based pigment ink. I mean, it would kind of make sense, and, and then I clean my stamps off with water after using these, but I thought all pigment inks were oil-based. So, I don't know, it just seemed like strange that a water-based ink like this, pigment ink, would dry on, I don't know, things like foils and metallics and... You know, kind of surfaces like that. Okay, so this is the large fence coming in from this. Uh, maybe I want to go a little bit more. I'll use a large portion of it here. I'll try to go kind of rule of thirds here. I'll see how it goes. When I was looking at this scene right now, I was thinking, uh oh, wait a minute, did I stamp this on the front? Or the, is this the front or the back of the scene? Sometimes you kind of lose track when you're working on the front and back side of a surface. It's kind of strange. Okay, you see that right there? I'm making my assessment now. Okay, now that black didn't. When you're stamping on vellum, you're not going to get as dark an impression. Okay, as you went on glossy cardstock. So everything is a little bit lighter um, tonal. You know what I need to do? I need to have a separate, I need to work on a separate piece of paper like that when I'm doing certain things. And then, uh, so that when I'm working it, you don't see this thing kind of showing through. It'd be kind of interesting on the vellum. You can see what something's going to look like too. You can stamp it on a piece of thing and just, you know, put it there. And, you know, you can see exactly what something's going to look like. Okay, that was the larger fence. I've been combining my larger fences and smaller fences, but... Um, I mean, I can go with the, the two. Same size and just go left and right. Let's do that one. But on this side, you know, we're not going to go in as far, so... So you don't need to ink up the whole thing. Okay, let's see right here. I can go, you know, similar height, but I like to go, I like to stagger it a little bit, I think. I think it's a little bit more interesting looking. Okay. All right. 
I should have held those down, I think, a little bit longer for a blacker impression, you know, to get that ink to transfer. Oh, what it was was I have all this ink sitting on there, and it's still wet, so I'm going wet into wet, so it's not transferring over as much. But we'll let that kind of, I don't know, that'll be the spirit of this piece. It'll just kind of be a little bit more airy, you know, where you don't have as strong a contrasts with the... Uh, the darkest of values, you know, black being in here. I mean, you, you could still, but, um, you know, with other imagery. But let's just go with that for right now. Okay, now one of the things that I'm finding that's working really, really well is using this little texture stamp. I use it all the time in my scenes, but um, let's use it. Using it, I don't know, just using it with these fences, it just seems to such a strong binder. Okay, it's just the tiny rocks right here. Now I'm doing it in the walnut stain. Walnut stain kind of looks like it would be dark, you know, from the look of the uh, top right here, but when you stamp it out, it's... Let's go for a really strong impression. I mean, that's like, I don't know, like a 50% value. I mean, it makes sense, you know, the distress inks are supposed to be aged looking, you know, so, you know, they're kind of washed out um, in terms of their colors. They're a little bit, uh, they're not so intense, which is good, you know. The Marvies tend to be very intense, so they make a good um, complement to each other. You don't want everything dull. You don't want everything too intense, so the best way to get that, you can't get it from a single line, you know. Single lines, they're all the same viscosity of inks. They're all the same types of inks. They can have a pretty good range of values, but oftentimes the intensities aren't just aren't there. So I go for Marvy for my intensity, and I go for Distress for my kind of more mellow tones. Okay, I mean that's not you know said. I'm sure there's some colors in some lines that might be a little bit more intense than something similar, let's say in the Marvy line or something like that. But by and large. I don't find that, so um, if you just have, I'm not a salesman, I'm just Marvy or anything like that, by the way, but um, if you have like, um, let's say one or two blues, Marvy blues, okay, you can have 20 other pads from other companies, and if you just add that one Marvy, into it, it'll increase the value of all the other um, inks in terms of their intensity, just by blending in one of those um, Marvy ones, okay? So it's not like you need, you have to have like a certain set number of um, ink pads to, you know, increase the uh, intensity and the vibrancy of your overall, you know, intensity scheme. Okay, so there's that uh, texture on there. You, you can even do some textures. God, this looks interesting. Look at this. This is the other side of it. That brown, that black almost looks, nah, I was going to say it almost looks darker this way, but it doesn't. Okay, but you can kind of see the difference here. Okay, look at the trees now. But see the trees on this way, it, it's starting to come together more um, visually uh, in terms of sense. When you look at it like this now, okay. Before, you know, early on, you can, you know, one thing could be, it doesn't really matter which way something's going. You know, when you first do the preliminary impressions, you know, you can still have, okay, this way is going to be the front, this one's going to be the back. You know, you can kind of decide on that um, later. I'm shaking up my pens, by the way. You have to really shake these up good. Now, here's the interesting thing. I think if I put in some of these dot highlights on the back of this piece, I don't think they'll even show up on the front of it. So I think all of these are going to go on the front. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Okay. So what color should I go with first? Let's go. I don't know if I'll use all these colors. I, like, I already have a lot of orange in here. I don't know if I need this one. Okay. So but let's go with this really bright yellow first. Okay. I wish these, these things don't snap into place, really. Not really good, at least. They tend, well, eh. 
and a fall off. Okay, so adding this ion. These pens are just so much fun to use on here in terms of kind of bringing, uh, I don't know, these trees to life. Uh, this is what I've always imagined for these trees um, in the past. But I couldn't always do it because the, you know, these types of pens weren't available. So there's so many, so much more media available these days. And these pens are, you know, these pens are, are I, don't know, I think, very reasonable. Um, I don't know. And, you know, just in comparison to certain types of media in the past, you know, I, I might pay $3 for, like, one gel pen that lasted a year or something like that. These things seem to, you know, do pretty well for themselves. So far, I don't know. There's a lot of paint coming out of um, these pens, so I don't know how long they'll last. This is a pretty big barrel here, so if it is full of ink, you know, we're talking about a lot of um, uh, cards with it. If you're doing, if you're kind of drawing on rocks with them like they uh, advertise, I don't know how long that'll last. You might be using up a lot of ink, you know, doing, you know, kind of marks like that, thick marks and kind of going into the pores of, um, you know, rocks. Okay. Maybe I won't add so much here. I'll kind of add a little bit more, maybe in one tree, and maybe other ones will just be a little bit more of a highlight type of thing. So far it's looking pretty good. Oh, that is so interesting. This looks so strange. Like, look at this. The camera can't even focus on this because it's translucent. But here, <laughs> I have to bring it up with the paper, otherwise it just doesn't focus in. But All right, let's see what... This is just one color, okay? It looks kind of strange right now. But we're going to really layer this. So you kind of have to see it as like a base layer, okay? Oh, I forgot the, uh, the trunks too. We'll do some of this and then we'll add some of those trunks on here. Maybe we'll do it after this. Okay, I think a little bit less there looks better. It looks a little bit more shimmery that way. Okay, so when you're doing this, I recommend flipping this around like so. And I'm going on to my trees like this. You kind of just branch it out like that. Let me see if this will will read at all if I do it on the back side on the trees back here. I don't I don't think it will because you know, the ink is in front of it, but we'll see. Yeah, you can't even see it at all. I, I mean, I didn't think you would. I mean, you can kind of see where I've drawn on there a little bit. Okay. See that right there? It's really weird. Oh, it's one of those things. Where you, if you put something, you know, darker in back of it, it shows up. But it shows up through the ink. Okay, so see, that's that's how I get my ideas for um, kind of that day and night type of thing. But look at that, how cool that looks. It's yellow. Let's see what it looks like like that. Oh, look at that, though. Yeah, all kinds of uh, interesting, I don't know, things potentially, uh, you know, to be done here. Okay, now, as this dries, it's changing it, so let's go for a couple of different layers. Maybe I need to heat set some of this again, I don't know.
you don't have to be perfect with this at all because, you know, when you put these things down here like this, you know, you're going to be putting dots over it anyway. So it just kind of reads as um, branches and, you know, kind of the background or underneath uh, things, underneath your... Um, underneath your uh, additional paint. <laughs> I'm concentrating on this. Okay. Let's see on this one right here. See, you know, branches on the, on the front and back here. This is a distant one. This one is really disappearing into it. I think I do need to heat set this one. <laughs> As I draw on it with this, that um, the white, and actually on these ones too, the white is really kind of just, it's absorbing a lot of the ink that's underneath it, okay? It's either that or it's just drying out very light. See, it's starting to curl. One of the things I notice with vellum, though, is it dries. It just kind of, it seems to go back down, or as it cools, maybe. I'm kind of doing a sloppy job over here, but... It's interesting, this ink, this white, goes on there very... Uh, well, I don't know, somewhat um, opaque, but then it just kind of merges with that the background in there. But I don't know, there's your, you know, your structure there, though. Okay, now let's go back to our uh, uh, dimension and highlighting, okay? So you, you want to put, you want to break up that, you know, that line a little bit. Now, hopefully this yellow kind of, kind of stands a little bit on its own. And that's where that dimension will come into play. If it looks like it's a little bit more forward. I don't know, maybe I need to heat set a little bit more. You know, kind of that, everything underneath. I'll, I tell you what, I'll heat set after I lay these um, yellow dots down here. Or before I go with another layer over the top of it. The white really kind of merges in with the background. I'll, I'll shake that up a little bit more, too. But let's see how this goes here. trying to do is I'm trying to cluster some of these dots. I do it a little bit more dense in some areas, and some areas, you know, I it might just be a few little dots like that. But I'm trying to kind of also make it a little bit more irregular, a bit thicker in some areas, and you know, like a like a larger branch is like say right here at the base or something. And over here I can just do a couple I can see the branches kind of going out this way, and I can just put a few little highlights on them like so. And I, I'm still developing, you know, this type of thing. I mean, this is like my third or fourth time. I, I maybe My second with the, these large pens, though. I, I haven't done... I, I used this, the smaller pens, uh, before. Okay, that's really merging in with that background there. One of the things that might help, too, is spray sealing. I think that's one of the things I did on um, some other paper. It's not bad that it's kind of merging in, though, in some ways, because it gives it a little bit more continuity. Okay, so you see that right there. Okay, now let's address some of this um, more distant tree right in here. Okay. I'm thinking maybe I, maybe I won't go with such 
uh, the vibrant one. Maybe I'll go with the dull yellow on the more uh, slightly more distant uh, tree. It is lighter though, so I'm not sure. some good shimmer you know down here it's like it looks like kind of mist already huh because it's just on that vellum i mean i haven't added you know any white uh paint like i always do all right all right let's heat set this again that paint is still really wet In vellum, we have to think about kind of mounting um, options and whatnot. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray seal this in the end. I'll talk about that later. But um, I'll show you how I spray seal, or what I'm going to spray seal it with in terms of a, a mounting spray. And we're just, we'll just mount it onto a piece of cardstock. Okay, so here is white. And I heat set in hopes that Some of the white will stay white. It, when you're doing it over wet acrylic, the other wet acrylic underneath it just kind of seeps right into it and changes it to, I don't know, kind of a lighter version of the color that's underneath it, as opposed to it being kind of really good, star, strong contrast in white. You really don't know until kind of you lay it down too and it sits for a couple minutes. As I have this white down, it might be a little bit too stark in terms of contrast. So you just kind of put the uh, the main color is always going to be that yellow, you know, for those aspens. All right, let's go back to that yellow. I'm looking at the white. Some of it's just remaining white, and I think it will, but. See in here, it became a little bit too dominant um, with that orange there, so. So you just put another layer right on top of it, and that's what's really great about um, these pens here. You know, you can kind of, you can really refine or adjust or whatever. Or, uh, in this case, we re just redo a whole area. Well, not really redoing, but um, kind of redefining it in terms of what the, the closest color might be. So now, I mean, we're putting the yellow over the top of it. That becomes the, uh, you know, the most, maybe the most visible um, textural color, at least, you know. We have the foundation color of orange, but adding that yellow right over the top of it. I'm going to my seven millimeter Meowzen pen. And I'm gonna add some highlights on these fences, okay? Could be some dots or a little bit of a line, kind of broken line. I always find that works the best. When you do this, you're going to really add um, 
some additional dimension to the piece, which just looks a lot more three-dimensional this way. As this goes into the darkness over here, I'll just use a little bit less of it, okay? It just kind of peters out a little bit more, okay? Here, it's kind of hard to see it now, but because it's kind of dark against dark, but putting some on the posts here too. It seems really effective. It's kind of mimicking what's going on in the tree trunks too. So it gives them a little bit of continuity between the tree trunks too. And why not, let's go on the tree trunks too. Let's take some of this now and, I don't know, add a little bit more of that. Uh, whatever branch uh, kind of structures. <laughs> and if you add too much, just, you know, go back in and you know, put some uh, ink over it uh, or paint. And see, it's already kind of light down there because I transitioned this up like that. So I'm just going to add this in those areas like this, okay? In some areas, I'm putting it over impressions that are on the other side. And like in the case of these two larger um, aspen trees, I'm putting it physically onto those trees. So, see, I'm just kind of reiterating things. The lighting is, they're being kind of bottom lit in this case, right? So, I bottom light that a little bit more, or like this trunk right here. It pushes it farther back and creates separation between those trees and the fence right here, which is supposed to represent something much closer to us. So, you know, it, it helps out with that. Can come down here too, like this, and bring some of this light down this way. Okay. Let's put some up top here too. There's some light area up there. That might, uh, those trees might benefit from a little bit of top lighting. You know, there's a little bit of light right here. Where I retained some of that white, or I don't know, it wasn't white, but kind of lighter area. And you can put some right in there too. So you just kind of, you kind of hit it in the areas where you've retained the light area. And then you just kind of move it into those darker objects right next to it. So see, this is right here. It's lighter right there. But then we have this dark fence right there. So, I mean, you can go like this if you want to and go right into that fence. Now, doesn't it look like that fence is kind of entering this really kind of mellow, soft light? You know, so it's like physically going into that area. Maybe right here, just on the tip of this fence right here. I'll have it joining in like that, just a little bit like that. See that? So see, it's going from dark to light in your object as well. 
So it just kind of, it's joining in on the, I don't know, it's joining in on the fun. It's joining in on the, uh, the lighting and textural um, uh, contrast. It's soft now, you know. Everything, everything on vellum is a little bit softer in general. But then you take something that's a little bit soft and make it even softer. Then anything that's harder, crisper, um, seems even more so by contrast, okay. Okay, so I think that looks pretty decent like that. The vellum... The vellum has its own feel. It's really unique. I don't, you know... My preference... I don't know. I don't think I have one. I do like the abilities with the vellum, though. There's a different essence to it, for sure, though. Let's take a look right here, okay? This is glossy. This is the vellum. Now, this is larger, too, of course. And, okay, now, if I spray seal this, that the vibrancy of that is going to get much more like that, okay? But... What's that last piece? Okay, now, like I said, it dried out, so... It, can't really compare it like in terms of the intensity but in terms of the I don't know there's there's going to be more contrast here but this one right here I don't know it's <laughs> there's definitely more of this kind of feeling of this glow I think in here um, That is so bizarre how intense that looks on the back side. That doesn't look too bad on the back, though, doesn't it? You could make this your... It's kind of interesting just to have those, you know, those that trunks and stuff like that in one tree, huh? Or you can do it on two or, you know what I mean? Than doing it on all of them. Maybe that looks even better. I don't know. I guess it affords you different opportunities, you know, when you're doing that type of thing and you have things in the front and the back. Let me see that again like that. I think that, you know, the fences look like they're still in the foreground, even though they are stamped over. Or this one's like over this uh, fence right here physically, but I don't know. It's uh, It's confusing when you have kind of end product options <laughs> in terms of this could be the front or the other side could be the front. I don't know. It's confusing for me. It's certainly interesting, though. Okay, so I will finish this off later. I think what I'll do, too, is I'll look at this in terms of, uh, you know, possibly adding some finishing touches. I have a feeling that um, I'll just more with some of the... Uh, paint pen work. Okay, now see, this is already going, adding real. I might spray seal this on the front side and seal in um, all the paint underneath it just so it won't physically mix. Um, and then I can add on some really light yellows onto this. And I think that will kind of make it stand out a little bit more. Okay, because as I keep building it up, it kind of, it merges, which is good in some ways because you get that little bit more continuity, but sometimes you want separation, which I'm, what I'm trying to go for here, so. Okay, well, let's see how that goes, so to be continued here. All right, this has been allowed to dry overnight and set up. What I like about this um, vellum is that you know, when you heat set it, it starts getting a little bit wobbly and a little bit warped. But when it cools down, it seems to cool down to flat. It still has a slight wave in it in a couple areas, but I really heat set this a lot. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's relatively flat, no problems there. Okay, now, one of the things I'm going to do before I take it outside and spray seal here, um, I'm beginning to wonder if I even need to do that, but... I'm looking around in here, and I don't see any remnants of that white that was um, laid down in here. 
for those extra kind of little pops, except on the area where I uh, have the images on the back. That's one of those things about doing things on the back. I, I should still do that experiment and uh, stamp all my imagery on the back and then lay the dots down on the front so that the dots stay nice and crisp and don't merge with the um, dye-based inks on the uh, surface here because that looks pretty good there in the background um, on those trees. Those little white dots in there are nice and crisp, but you can see I laid down a ton of white on here. Now, I don't know if I need to spray seal or not with that, actually, um, you know, before doing it. Maybe I just needed to let it dry. Okay, but here I have a black pencil, uh, colored pencil, and what we're going to do is we're going to um, kind of develop um, the shadows down here. Now, in some areas we don't need to do it a lot, but here's what I'm looking for right here. This area right here is light, okay? So with that light in there, we're probably saying, with this um, soft light in here, it's not like a harsh light coming in here, like a sunset or something where we're going to do some, you know, really developed shadows. But right at the base here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend out these um, posts here. And I do have shadows at the base of them a little bit. But what I'm going to do, and all I'm doing is, let's say the post is right here. What I'm doing is I'm doing something like this. And what you want to do is you want to develop the shadow a little bit more towards the, uh, the base of the uh, object. And then as it moves away, it kind of lightens. So if I do something like this, you can see my shadow of my pencil. It's a little bit, you know, darker there. And then you see how it dissipates like that. That's what we're doing right down here. So you can see this one right here. And then as I move it out, I'm kind of moving it in this direction. I just figured it's, uh, these are backlit, so, but it's not so strong. I mean, that lighting is coming from this whole area here, so it's not so definitive, like strong, you know, kind of, you know, uh, uh, sunset shadows or something like that. Okay. So see that there? It's, it's just kind of anchoring the scene down a little bit more. And it's incorporating the... Um, the posts in with the foundation right here, okay? Um, I think it looks okay as is, but um, it just it just situates them a little bit stronger in terms of um, them being a solid uh, with that surrounding area, or with the foundation at least. Okay, so I'll go a little bit more. I mean, you can throw it on the back side, too, like this. I don't know if it'll really matter, but maybe it'll show through a little bit. You can, do, you can lay down a lot more on the back because it's not going to show up as much. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. It's, it's kind of a little bit of softer look. Let's try this right here, too. Um, right at the base of the trees, maybe I'll lay down some shadows. You can't really see it because the fence post is right in the way, but kind of adding it at the base of this one right here. Let's try that. Like I said, I don't know if we'll be able to see it at all. Yeah, you can, a little bit in there. You can see it more than I thought, actually, so let me kind of just soften that up a little bit. Actually, I might have put too much. Let me just take some of this, just kind of rub it around like this. I can take an eraser, too. Yeah, that removed some. Yeah, it just gives me, gave me a little bit of a base shadow back there. It anchors the trees a little bit more, and it gives them um, a little bit of opacity as well. Okay, so let me try this right here. Let me take some of this yellow and lay it down here. I'm adding some more kind of fallen leaves, okay, into this area. Let me try this here and see if it um, see if it works. I'm laying down some of this yellow at the top of this. Let's see if we can get a couple um, a little bit more solid applications of this um, yellow in here. Um, solid meaning, you know, as opposed to it um, 
absorbing some of the um, other paints that were already laid down on top of it, or underneath it. So quite a bit of shimmer here. Um, like I said, I, I don't know if this is a, I don't know if it's making a big difference between this and uh, you know the glossy card stock or something like that. But it's interesting to work on from a, I don't know, from just a kinesthetic standpoint. It's really different working on um, or different. I don't know, really different, but. It's just a different feel working on the vellum. There's something a little bit more... Um, I don't know, it's almost like sensual. <laughs> it's just, it has a different feel to the surface, you know, so when you're... The utilization of uh, different media on there, it's... I don't know, it just has a much different feel than, you know something glossy like this and a little bit less porous, I guess you can say. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. All right, so I'm going to take this out and uh, I think I will spray seal this. And um, I'll do that with a Krylon UV resistant clear over the top of it. And then one, one of the things I won't show on camera, I don't feel like taking my camera outside and uh, setting all that up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it with a spray sealant on the back, okay? I mean, I guess you can use, you know, some kind of glue um, tape system, you know, like a roller tape or something like that. But with something like this, I just feel that it's um, a better bet to just give this an overall spray. And I'll bring my can of spray sealant in here. I'll show you what I'm doing. And then what we'll do is we'll mount this onto a piece of um, stiff cardstock. I'll probably do it on um, a piece of my Mohawk Everyday Digital white coated silk. Okay, but just, you know, I mean, anything would do. I don't know if I would do it on uh, copy paper, but I guess you could. I just, the white coated silk is just has a little bit of a brighter um, finish to it, you know. And it's just, you know, it's cardstock, so this one happens to be a 100-pound cover. But what I'll do is I'll just mount this on here like that. Because it's really hard to mount, um, you know, to mat uh, vellum just because it's, you know, it's real flimsy. So I think that'll be a good way to go. And then I'll show you about brayering and uh, getting this fixed and then cutting this out too. Trimming it. Okay, so next step. All right, I'm back. This is the spray adhesive that I use. It's called Super 77. It's by 3M. Spray adhesive. Looks like I got it right at Staples back when. Um, I don't know. You can find it right off the shelf. I don't know if it's in hardware stores. Uh, Krylon UV resistant clear. You can find this online at any art store. Uh, like a Michaels or something like that should have it, you know, Joann's, I would think. Yeah, they might actually have this one, too. But you can find these things anywhere. Okay, so this one you spray on the back, of course. And uh, you want to have something laid down. I put my... I have start... I figured out um, how to spray outside breezes. I, I put this into a, a box and, uh, you know, with the flaps up everything like that. It just seems to control it a little bit more. Okay, now I have that spray adhesive on the back, so I need to kind of flatten this out. So what you do is you put a protective cover over the top of it, and then if you have a brayer, use the brayer, or you can just use your hand like this and flatten it out, okay? But, you know, you put this um, top layer on there just to protect your media on there. You know, like a piece of tracing paper or something like that would probably be even better. That was that's not from brayering right now. That was from yesterday. But anyways, you get this nice, you know, stiff piece of it's like, you know, it's as if this was done on cardstock now, instead of that vellum. So this is much easier to handle in terms of formatting a card, of course. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this. I'll trim away, you know, slight a slight bit of 
the uh, vellum along with it to give it a, a nice flush trim. All right. So I have my straight edge here. I guess you can use a paper trimmer too, but I, you know, I didn't take the time to really mount this straight. So um, I'm just lined up, but I have, I don't know, it's probably like a millimeter or so of the vellum that I'm trimming into. And you get a really great cut like that, okay? Okay, now let's take a look at this. Now in terms of the handling, of course, this feels much better now that it's on the card stock and whatnot. Easy to format. Um, in terms of card, if you want to mount this on something or put it on a folded, you know, card for the opening, it'd be interesting to have this be the interior too, where you open a card and, you know, voila, there's your piece. Okay, now I'm looking at this and yeah, the white did kind of merge with that, um, uh, the colors underneath there. So I don't know. That's all. It's interesting to me how that would bleed out like that. But this is spray sealed now. So uh, I just did a really light coat with the Krylon. I don't know if it. Um, I don't know if I got everything. I just wanted to do it really lightly because I was using a gloss and if I was going to use something on this, I would probably, the better kind of spray would probably be a matte spray because it's more in the spirit of the vellum. But, you know, you can just take a gloss spray and just spray it less and, uh, you know, it won't be, it won't give you a glossy finish. You know, you're just kind of doing a dusting of a, a spray over the top of it. Plus, um, if you give it too thick of a coating, you stand to lose some of that white um, pigment ink. The white pigment ink dries, and it's almost like you can think of it like um, like pastels or chalks. You know, where if you spray seal those, you know, you stand to you know you can potentially lose some of those little details. Okay, but this little white on here is just giving me that little extra touch. And like I said, I hope that I am. applying it over an area of the Krylon where it'll, um, you know, be separated from um, the colors on the, uh, underneath it. But that's just kind of a, I don't know, a detail in this piece. If it merges, it merges, or if it merges in parts, and so be it. Okay, so let's do a little comparison. Con oh, I should have sprayed this while I was outside too. Let me take this and spray this because this looks really different um, or will look different when it's sprayed. Okay, I am spray sealed. You know, takes, I don't know, 10 seconds to do. Let's take a look at this one. Glossy cardstock, okay? The colors, uh, the colors weren't too bad. I didn't have like this vast change of um, intensity and value. Sometimes there was a lot of Marvy inks used on this one, and when you use Marvy inks, they do, they don't dry as dull and light as some other brands of inks. Now, when those other brands of inks do dry that way, you just spray seal them, and it brings back the vibrancy usually. Sometimes you it's better to kind of spray seal while they're wet too, but the Marvies kind of retain their vibrancy um, when dry. There's just less of something in that um, the water, I guess, that they're using with the. Uh, uh, with the pigments or whatever, the dyes. But um, let's take a look at this one and see the look overall. And let's take a look at, and look at this one. Now, this one's, of course, bigger, but um, you can see down here uh, the blacks on here. That's dye-based ink, okay? This is a black pigment ink on vellum. Okay, you see how much darker the uh, the glossy, the dyes on glossy are? Um, 
This one has more contrast and more probably depth. This one has, this one just, I don't know, it has a, there's a slight different feel though to it. This one isn't there. It's a little bit of a warmer kind of fuzziness. <laughs> you know, that's often the types of things that they talk about when they're talking about um, things like photography, certain types of camera lines. They tend to focus more on, um, you know, like crisp, deep saturations and uh, some camera manufacturers kind of go for more of a slightly warmer feel, you know, and less focus, you know, like Panasonic's real known for like real super crisps. And I think it was um, Canon or something like that. It has a slightly warmer feel. TVs, too, um, are different that way. I don't know. You know, I like them both. Um, and I do like the vellum. Now, the vellum, too, with that, I don't know if I could really tell very much um, that those trees are stamped in the background. I think I would have to do these ones in the background, too, you know? To create a little bit more depth um, in here but I just like the way they looked you know when I first stamped them out okay let's take a look at the shimmer here now I, these ones I worked more I worked these ones quite a bit with my pens okay this one right here I worked too but um, you know there I think there's less depth in here but you know I don't know I probably used five more layers of dots on this one just trying to develop it because I'm trying to figure things out, too. But in terms of the depth within the image, okay, this is one image right here, I think that looks fairly deep and um, developed in terms of the, uh, I don't know, whatever it would be, the, the range, the depth of field, the depth of field within that given image. I think it looks three-dimensional, you know. These ones, I think, look reasonably three-dimensional as well. Uh, okay, now on this one too, one of the things I didn't do, because I, I just spray sealed it, but what I did on these ones I forgot, was I went into this and I laid down some um, of these white kind of little shimmering touches. Let's do that right now, because that should help this one as well, just to give it a little bit more depth. What we're doing is we're building out those lighter values like that and the lighter so it's going from darker kind of in the background visually speaking to lighter in the front like that so see this little white dots like that see the difference between over here and here those little white ones really stick out <clears throat> now a lot of these yellow ones over here were um white but it just merged with the background so um you know because i didn't bother spray sealing in between coats so I think I'll have a really good combination, and I think it will have to involve um, spray sealing when it comes to these types of pens, just to get that little extra bit. Maybe you don't have to spray seal in between every color, but maybe if you're going all the way to white, you know, you do it once and um, lay down the white. And then, you know, if you want to protect it afterwards, what you can do is you can spray seal it again, or just leave it, you know, having these as... Um, you know, the top layer without any coating, it should be fine. You know, acrylic paints are really quite rugged and durable. Um, so you don't, you don't, I don't think you necessarily need to spray seal them. Okay, so, yeah, that looks pretty good right there. See that little extra depth in here? Okay, let's take a look at this one right here. Now, this one I barely spray sealed, so I don't know if I really hit it. Um, well, because I didn't want to change the spirit of some of this stuff, and plus it, I don't know, it looks kind of strange when you're spray sealing a film when you don't have the white underneath, it looks totally different. But, okay, let's take a look again. Same composition, two different feels, I guess. Um... Let's do a little fine-tuning here. Let's go with, uh, let me stamp this little um, rock texture, tiny rocks in black, just to get a couple little uh, added
added touches of, you know, our strongest, darkest value, okay? So let me show you what I just did right here. See that right down there? I added those black ones. So you have it in black or and various shades of brown, plus, you know, various shades of gray because I, I don't know, stamped it out 10 times in that same color. But look at that right there. But that's, I don't know, I, I think that that vellum is... That vellum's pretty nice in terms of those transitions right in there. I don't know, figuring it out. Then here we go with the, uh, the glossy. Now these pieces right here, I figure I, I, I can do them pretty fast, but you know, on this one I'm just kind of figuring things out, so. Um, I don't know, we'll have to do, we'll do a quick scene um, using these uh, stamps right here. Uh, um, on either vellum or um, on a glossy, or on um, like the uh, the white coat itself, you know, which is close to a mat. And uh, I don't know. Instead of using like a thousand little dots, I'll try it with you know. We'll go with I don't know a hundred. You know, a hundred really doesn't take too long to do. It doesn't take any time to do ten dots or something like that. But um, I don't know. Fun stuff. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Slow down a couple little extra leaves in here. This is that other color of a uh, um, pen, something like that. I really like those uh, pens, though. <laughs> They've answered a lot of problems or questions in terms of the uh, how to make um, your autumn leaves really kind of shimmer. And that's exactly what we want in our fall types of scenery, I think. You know, we want dimension within our trees as well as that color, right? And uh, I don't know, that captures the good spirit of those trees transitioning like that into those fall colors. Okay, so anyways, uh, thanks so much uh, for watching the video. If you've hung in this far, thanks so much. Hope this video comes in handy. Hope you try uh, experimenting on different um, surfaces with your uh, media. The acrylic paint pens pretty much work on everything. I haven't tried this fall scene on um, like a metallic. I'm kind of curious about using um, some of these trees or something like this. Maybe on gold cardstock. I don't know if I would go with the mirrored gold, but you could. Or something like um, the Star Dream. Um, antique gold that might be kind of interesting to stamp those images out in gold ink over gold gold over gold or something like that you know going with the brilliance gold and trying something like that out so all right so anyways if you have any questions drop me a note in the comment section if you've figured out any kind of interesting uh, media combinations with these trees let me know and let me know how it's going with your stampscapes okay thanks for watching